This video is the abbreviated highlights of the Council's Complicit in Farming Crisis video. This is an important video to watch if you like eating food and if you're a farmer and you're not sure whether you should join in the upcoming protests. Uh, we've really got to get farmers to understand where this is going and that farming will die if we don't do something now. Now, for those of you that don't know Sandy Adams, she has researched what goes on in the UN and their various agendas to a degree that I don't know anyone else that's done this depth. And she's looked at how their various agendas are being rolled out all over the world. What we're going to discuss today in particular is the impact these agendas are having on farming. A lot more to this story than just cheap imports undercutting British farmers. Many people may be aware of the farming protests that are going on all over the EU and this is because of these UN agendas. So in England what specifically are the worst things that the farmers are having to face do you know? Um, yeah from what I can gather it's um, they're being run into the ground. Farmers are under pressure but the worst thing that the worst pressure they're under is that they've been a man from the ministry has visited all the farms and has said look over the next three years, your subsidies incrementally are going to be cut unless you diversify and you stop farming meat, dairy, sheep. So sheep farming, uh, beef farming and dairy farming has to be cut. And they said that you ha will have to diversify and set up businesses on your farm. Yeah, so anything dairy, but farming. Anything but farming. And so it is, it's a way of corporatizing farms. What's the difference between what the EU farmers are protesting about and what is upsetting the English farmers? Is there an overlap because this is, seems to be a global directive or are there different points of view, do you know? It, it is a global agenda and this is really coming from a United Nations directive. And this has been going on for such a long time. Really, they want to corporatise farming and state make it state-owned. This was flagged up to me a number of years ago. And I was given, uh, a friend of mine was working for the Soil Association, and I was given a, a report, and it was called the Agricultural Working Group Report for Food and Farming. Now, do look it up. In that, I was absolutely shocked to the core because they were talking about how they, they wanted to revolutionise farming and farms into what they called super farms, these big, huge agri-tech super farms, which we're seeing, particularly in Somerset, where I am, agri-farming has become really, really big. It's sort of agri-tech farming. Um, and so the tech is the biggest thing. It's agri-tech farming. And they've got, uh, you know, 5G collars on, on cows in Somerset. Um, where they, I mean, it's horrendous. These poor cows have got 5G collars on. And a lot of the farmers are, are sort of, really going into big big farming um uh, that it's almost like state farming and in this group this agricultural working group report it said that farmers be paid not to farm so that they could actually set up these huge corporate farms um which i think is the, the biggest idea and it's all it'll all be gmo and it e even says you know it'll be focused on robotics and and insect biomass in the whole idea of insect biomass was horrendous and it was to phase out meat farming and bring in insect biomass and using robotics more in farming now this to me it just made my blood run cold so that was a big flag to me that they want to corporatize farming and take farmers away and there was also something that said that farmers wouldn't be able to hand down farms as they had done previously you would have to go to university to learn how to be a farmer so what? obviously they, that's yeah, crazy they want, i know they want um farming to be learnt in a technical way i mean it's it's horrendous that farming should be something that people go to university to learn how to do it and then they set up these massive agri farm you know sort of agri tech farming uh which is you know undercover gmo uh led lights you know everything sort of very efficient and very uh nothing natural nothing natural no, at all. A, fr a friend of mine is in uh, northern indiana and he was saying he said you can drive for hundreds of miles and all you see is soy and corn growing and he yeah. said they are farming it with drones 
the drones go over with the chemicals and he said you know where are the farmers now but it, it's all done with all this tech this is this is really franken farming this is horrible this is not this is not natural it's not what the body needs it's not what we need as human beings you know uh we've really got to get farmers to understand where this is going and that farming will die if we don't do something now if we don't alert people to this horrendous thing that's that they're trying to do um you know the very fact that they want to hand farming over to someone like sainsbury's i mean sainsbury's future of food document it was frightening that sainsbury's want to start producing their own food and it's all undercover it's gmo it's hideous it is not going to be healthy and then we've got the absolute zero document that a lot of the uh farmers don't haven't seen or don't you know don't know about uh, the, where all the shipping in and out and, and the, the imports and exports from Europe um, for, for Europe will be will be stopped by 2030. So particularly England anyway, um, the absolute zero document really pertains to England, where by 2030 in their roadmap is that we will have no imports or exports in or out of the UK by 2030 by air or ship. How are we going to feed ourselves if we're not growing anything? And yes, that's this, this is what really I, I had to read those documents myself because I wasn't just going to believe you. I, I downloaded them and I read them and that really put me into deep level of shock because yes. all these random events and things that don't make sense, when you know what the end goal is, everything makes sense and you start to view the world in a very different way I, I i can't believe it myself i mean i think we've really got to get our our act together and we need to look for a human future of farming being able to treat human beings and the animals well um and this agri tech farming does neither um in fact they don't even want animals farmed they want us to live on as, as I said, insect biomass and soya, which we know is really bad for human beings. Soya is a very bad crop. The more processed stuff we eat, the worse our health becomes. It has to be done in, in a way that farmers can still make money because um, obviously farmers say, oh, well, I would go organic, but I can't afford it. So all of the solar panels, and as you know, I've done a lot of research. We've gone to our local council talking about them. And it's horrible when you realise the production and the fact that they become toxic waste when because of all the, the components of them. So recycling them is, is difficult. And you so one bad hailstorm and they're covering our farmland with it. And you read the Absolute Zero report and you think, well, hang on a minute, you're covering our farmland in solar panels and we're not going to be able to import food. You know, you mm. don't need a degree in anything to see that that's not going to go well. So, you know, this is being pushed on farmers. They are given more money if they put their land either over to rewilding or to solar. The thing is that our council, if you, I mean, I've, I've only been looking at my Somerset County Council at the moment, and there's no food security provision at all in any of their documents. They've put out something called the our, our corporate plan. Our corporate plan. Now, there's, there you go. Who's <laughs> uh, in the name? Actually, yeah. <laughs> um, so they, I looked at their their website, and they, here's our corporate plan, and it is all about it's all about renewables. It's about housing. It's about wind farms, photovoltaics. It's about walking and cycling and children going to learn about sustainability, grown-ups learning sustainability. It has got absolutely nothing, nothing. All these budgets are going to all these different things. Nothing about food security. Nothing. No. It's, it's a North Somerset yeah, mapping of all their planning, um, how, they, how they see the future of North Somerset land. So all of the areas in red, yellow and orange, that is all going to be over to renewables, wind farms. And the pink is solar. I mean, it, it's actually all of the agricultural land between now and I think it's 2028, which would be a disaster, you know. It's just criminal covering land like this in wind farms. I'm afraid you can no longer view this map because since Sandy started discussing it in public, they've taken it off their website. So let's swing back to the farmers. What can they do? Now, my my answer to that would be carry on doing what you're doing and just sell to the public, cut out the supermarkets. 
Yes, I, I think so. And also, yeah. you know, the, what the government should be doing is helping farmers wean them off the chemicals with get, yes. get them subsidies so they can do natural farming. I saw a video on Twitter the other day where the farmer was saying, you want us to be natural, but yet we're not allowed to store the manure in case the runoff gets into the water. And yet, yet you will happily pump sewage into the sea, yet you're yeah. penalising the farmers. And the yeah. thing is, whatever people's views are on eating cows, cow manure is one of the most beneficial things for the soil Absolutely. you can get. So if we want to set up a regenerative agriculture model, which I'm all for, you need that cattle. You've got to have that whole circle. I mean, sort of billions of microorganisms that are in just a teaspoon of soil, that whole food wide web that is in nature has got it absolutely perfect and then man comes along and tips chemicals and ruins everything mm -hmm. so you know that's what we should be doing and also community farms as well mm -hmm. if the farmers don't want to be doing all of this i think selling land to the community <laughs> or renting it out or putting it in a trust so that we can do it and i think the community very much needs to be on board with the farmers and help them set up those mm. farm shops um because stretching the farmers i mean I, I don't know if you saw any of clarkson's farm but i saw a bit of that and the paperwork they make them go through the oh, hoops they have to yeah. get through it just to get their subsidies them down. It wears them down. I mean, all of this is wearing farmers down. And I mean, it's really sad. The average age of a farmer is, is 65 to 85 years old. Young people aren't coming into farming. They see what's, you know, what, what they're going through and they think that's not for me. I'll go and work in the city. You know, this is this is a trouble. You know, we need a whole new breed of young farmers to understand that if we don't preserve this this very very sacred part of our lives you know it's a, it's it's the whole nature cycle and if you have good farms you have good food and you have healthy people that whole we are part of nature thing having mm. food grown in really sterile environments we need certain bacteria in our system proper actual sunlight rather than growing in artificial sun, light sun we need to be yeah. in nature and experiencing it this whole sterilized artificialness is not going to do us any good but you try getting that through to people that are programmed on we've got to save the planet by growing everything mm. undercover in warehouses yeah. with solar panels on the roof and all being grown by robots i mean they i've seen online i don't know where it was probably china where they've got vast warehouses and it's robots picking insects off and and going around and it's just like that's this not what, this is what they want they want robotic farming and you know this is the future this is the the chinese model is is their model you know it's it's like forcing this this awful way of robotic farming digital id surveillance all of that stuff data harvesting all on us you know this is a, this is a part of a much bigger picture and you know, we really have to stand up and understand what's happening to us. And you did ask me earlier, what's what's the difference between the way they're treating Europe with farming and the way they're treating us? Well, the thing is that, for instance, for the farmers in Holland, it was about the fertilizer, stop telling them they couldn't use the fertilizer, which they'd use. And I understand that some fertilizers aren't good, but they they used that and they did it overnight because it did cause a backlash. Suddenly the farmers overnight said, no, we've got to protest about this. In England, they're doing incrementally. It's over th this three year period. And they know that if the British farmers get up and fight, then they've lost it. Yes. This is why we have to do it. But what's very important is the public understand why they're doing it and support them. I don't know what they would do in England. I can't imagine it would be quite like they have demonstrated in Europe. But, you know, if roads are shut off and it's inconvenient and there's suddenly no food in the supermarkets, that gives people a taster of what it would be like without the farmers not having food in the supermarkets. So getting behind them is obviously very important. You know that farmers are salt of the earth. Busy lives as well. They don't have time to be doing all of this stuff. They wouldn't be kicking off unless it's absolutely vital that they do so. And I know some farmers are concerned about that, that the public opinion, they don't, they don't, no one wants to be a nuisance. No one really wants to complain. But the stakes are so high here. The farming is being destroyed and it's been destroyed by design in order to bring in this hideous way of living that you know and farming that really won't 
make anybody happy. And all the proceeds will be siphoned off. The people will never see the proceeds of this and neither will the farmers. So if they really want to get on board with proper farming for people, and because otherwise we'll end up with no farms, no food. And that's, and that's exactly a lot more upsetting to the general public yeah. than no you know, farmers, a few no days food. or weeks of protesting. Yeah. And I'm sure most people would would rather have decent farmers markets and decent farmers shops and cut out these wretched supermarkets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It needs to be people and planet before profit and politics. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sandy. Much appreciated. And yeah, we've, we've got to get... Please share this video far and wide because it's very important that the public know this isn't just farmer drama kicking off. There's a really yeah. good reason for the farmers to take to the streets in their tractors when they're busy people. Thanks, Rachel. It's been lovely. Mm -hmm.